Hey guys, so this lecture is obviously going to be on the Great Depression, and it kind of hits home to what is going on in our country today, but I'll give you some reassuring facts that kind of put the Great Depression into perspective compared to the unemployment that we have been seeing uh, over the past few months. So, diving in, there was economic troubles kind of happening towards the end of the 1920s. We didn't necessarily talk a whole lot about them, but <clears throat> um, American industry... So companies were barely making a profit and losing money. So uh, today we're so used to <clears throat> inflation where things become more expensive over time. Well, actually what was happening during this time is things were becoming uh, less expensive. We have deflation. And uh, especially in things like the automobile industry, now you could make cars for a lot cheaper. It was, you know... Um, easy to mass produce and this drove costs down and while that made it where more people could buy it also made the profit margins smaller for those companies um, also farmers um, we have the dust bowl that uh, was what it's called for the great dust storm that took over the uh, great plains during this time period uh, what happened during the Dust Bowl was due to bad farming practices and people not you know, replenishing the soil. Um, you know, on the Great Plains, you have these vast grasslands, and once you till that up, that grass was holding in all that dust or holding all the dirt in place. But once that's gone and tilled up to make a farm, you know, it allowed the way for this massive drought and dust storm to just ravish all the American crops out on the Great Plains. And also, the demand for food had dropped. Uh, the United States was out of World War I. In the 1920s, people weren't, or consumers, weren't buying up as much food. Also, we have issues with the banks. So, since the farmers were not making any money, the banks foreclosed on the farmer's land, leaving some homeless. Also, now you have not as many people producing food, so it makes it even harder um, for farmers to make it. Uh, there's also consumers. Americans were not buying new items. Uh, many were paying off 1920s debt. Uh, so during the 1920s, uh, we talked a little bit about the way Americans spent their money. Um, many Americans were now buying on credit. So you, know, you can see an ad here that says, you know, uh, 10 cent a day. You know, and you don't even hear people try to say things today. Oh. You know, this only will end up costing you over time, you know, uh, 25 cents a day or, you know, a dollar a day. But really, once you add all that up, it adds up to be a lot more. And when you buy on credit, you're going to be spending a lot more. So people were buying, like, big ticket items like cars, washing machines, refrigerators, all these new luxury items on credit and didn't necessarily um, know the full implications of, you know what was going to happen when they couldn't pay off those debts. Um, so the price of goods, so to make a profit, companies raised prices and lowered workers' income. And this kind of segues into Herbert Hoover. And Herbert Hoover sometimes you know, criticized because he didn't necessarily react as many people wanted. You know, a president to react during an economic depression. And uh, Herbert Hoover. Um, was, you know, he was conservative. He didn't believe that the government should get involved uh, in the free market economy. And he was a humanitarian. You know, I think he kind of gets misrepresented as being this cold-hearted guy that just, you know, didn't want to help anybody. Um, he actually did get the majority of big businesses in the United States to come into the White House and sit down. He said, well, you know, don't cut wages. Please don't cut wages for employees and they said all right well, we won't cut wages but in turn what they had to do to keep making profit was lay people off so they could either cut wages and keep the same amount of people on people were making less money or you keep half your employees and lay off the other half so it's really you know a double-edged sword that neither one is going to have a good outcome and then the stock market comes tumbling down and the stock market is often, you know, what people point to um, when we talk about the Great Depression. They say, oh, you know, the stock market collapsed. That's what caused the Great Depression. But 
There's really a lot of other things. The stock market crash alone couldn't cause an economic depression the size of what happened. So, yes, the stock market played a role, but it wasn't the sole factor in bringing down the U.S. economy. Um, so many people had invested in companies, and so during the 1920s, the average American got involved in the stock market, buying and uh, trading stocks. Uh, still very much a rich man's game, that's the way it is today. But um, many of these middle class people that were buying stocks were buying them on margin. So what that means is they were borrowing, borrowing money to buy these stocks. And we've talked about this before. Um, when you buy a stock, you can say buy you know twenty dollars stock, and if that company goes out of business, well you lost your twenty dollars. But the problem is, is if you borrowed from your parents that twenty dollars, and you invest it, and that company goes to under, um, you've lost your you know twenty dollars you invested, but you still now owe your parents twenty bucks. So it's really a, you know losing forty dollars. So uh, you can't ever owe money into the stock market you can only lose what you put in but if you borrowed that money you still have to pay that money back even if your stocks collapse and so the stock market on black tuesday which is october 29th 1929 the stock market crashed and this was the beginning of the great depression and all the events that happened afterwards just pile on to the unfortunate things that happened um so stock prices fell and as stock prices fell, um, people tried to get out of the stock market. So what that means is, you know, when people saw, you know, the wealthy investors, you know, the super rich, you know, selling off their stocks really quickly, like, oh God, I gotta sell my stocks off really quickly. You know, we we I don't want to get stuck with this worthless stock. You know, I want to get what I can for it right now. Um, you know, to salvage some money and. It was so bad that they even had some people jump out the windows on Wall Street. Some of the big market guys who had, you know, just lost their entire fortunes, um, you know, jumping out of windows. And if you see that, you know, if you're on, you know, trading stocks or you know, buying stocks and you see, hey, you know, this wealthy guy just, you know, jumped out a window due to the stock market crash. I mean, I got to start selling myself. That's obviously a sign that things are going downhill. And... Um, the Great Depression is marked as the worst economic time in American history. Uh, there was a pretty bad period in the 1830s with Andrew Jackson, but nonetheless, it's hard to compare, you know, a 1930s or 1830s uh, market economy to you know, the 1920s and 1930s. Um, and even, you know, it's kind of hard to compare our economics to, you know, what happened back in 19... Um, 29 because we do now have government uh, agencies in place to prevent or help prevent something like this from happening. So just to give you guys an idea, um, many of you lived through the Great Recession uh, back in 08. And uh, during the Great Depression, unemployment was 25%. So a quarter of Americans were out of work. And, you know, that unemployment rate doesn't include people who had to take part-time jobs and they wanted a full-time job. They don't get counted as being unemployed or somebody that took a wage cut or is working a job, you know, below their skill level. So it hit, you know, well over a quarter of Americans. And it wasn't like, you know, with the recession, I believe the highest unemployment got was a little bit over 10%. But the economy after the recession recovered in only five years. So we've seen you know, unemployment drop back down uh, within five years. But during the Great Depression, as you can see here with the dates I have on the screen, you know, from 1920 to 1941, that's a long time. You know, that's 12, over 12 years, or is it? It's exactly 12 years, of um, economic hardship in the United States is really um, a lot of people point to World War II is what brings the United States out of the Great Depression but it really the Great Depression is one of the major causes of World War II and we'll talk more about that later um, so some of the main causes you have out-of-date equipment in many industries economic problems for farmers too much credit and debt and too many people not working so uh, I'm gonna stop here and I'll talk about the financial collapse the actual collapse 
of the banking system in the United States in the next lecture.